it is, uh, yeah, we just got here. We are getting ready for another unboxing Star Wars video. So let's check out what's in the bag. Okay, it's uh, Jawa James here with Yowie the Skunk and our co-host Baby Jawa. What you got today? Oh, you got a wick at the Ewok, uh, Baby on. Yeah! Mwah. Yep, um, it is uh, February 28th. Tomorrow is Leap Day, so you're probably watching this on Leap Day. Happy Leap Day to you. Uh, just to give you an update, I just finished week eight of uh, Where's Star Wars Every Day. That puts me up to 56 days right now. You can check behind me. We're on day 59. Uh, leap to his day 60. Uh, if you want to help us out, that'd be great. Uh, just a, a dollar a day for February would provide enough food for a uh, refugee for one month for Collateral Repair Project helping urban refugees in Amman, Jordan. Okay, let's, uh, hi, hi, baby Jawa. Mwah. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah, we got the camera going. All right, so let's check out what's in the bag this week. We're going to talk about two episodes of Rebels. We have uh, Homecoming and the Honorable Ones. We also have some stuff here in the bag. Okay, let's check it out. All right. First thing we have is a copy of The Force Awakens, uh, the Incredible Cross Sections. We'll talk about that. What else do we have? We have a copy of Star Wars, the original trilogy graphic novel uh, coming out March 1st from uh, Disney. We'll talk about that. Ooh, 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 what else we got? We got a Chewbacca! You're right, we got a Chewbacca the Wookiee here. He talks. Yeah, and this is for Baby Jawa. You like Chewbacca? Yeah. Well, it was for you as a gift for Baby Jawa from uh, one of our friends. Um, let's zoom out a little bit here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, and then we got some Cheerios for you. So let, let's talk about what we got here. Uh, first off, we'll talk about uh, The Force Awakens Incredible Cross Sections. This came out on uh, the day the movie came out. It has all kinds of uh, cross-sections of the various vehicles. It's written by Jason Fry, and the illustrations are by Kemp Remillard. Like, we have uh, a shot of Kylo Ren's command shuttle um, with all kinds of detail put in, uh, you know, looking at... Uh, here's the Millennium Falcon, um, as it is seen in The Force Awakens. You know, some of the different uh, details in here. It says, you know, crew quarters were re reconfigured uh, to include galley as wedding gift for Leia Organa. That way, you know, there's actually, they could actually eat food on the Falcon rather than just eating the, the nutrition cubes. Yeah, you want some food? Yeah. You want some water? You're going to drink out of the cup without spilling on yourself? There we go. Look at that. We started talking about food. Baby Java got interested in the food. Um, a lot of cool information. Uh, one of my favorite ones is we learn more about Han's giant freighter that uh, you see him flying that has the Wrath Tars aboard. Um, yep, his big freighter is the Aravana. Yeah, you want more water? It is a uh, Baleen class heavy freighter, so it's like basically it's just like a giant whale of a freighter. Okay, you gotta tilt it up. Ready? Yeah, you're going to totally spill it on yourself. All right, here. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Yowie, what do you like in this? Oh, I like at the beginning we got, uh, we got the Ray Speeder. Oh, we got Poe's X-Wing here. We got Poe's X-Wing. Is that exciting? Can you say X-Wing? Can you say water? You want water? Okay. There you go. You can hold it. Well, there we go. And we got some water on the table, but that's okay. Yeah? Oh, poor baby girl. You got water on your face. Yeah. You're doing okay. All right, we're doing a show right now. Yeah, we got the show must go on. Yeah? Okay. So anyway, this book came out uh, right when the movie came out in December. Uh, you can check it out. I would recommend it. It is uh, pretty cool. Um, it's a good companion if you get the uh, Force Awakens Visual Dictionary. This provides a lot of information that's not in there because this primarily focuses on the vehicles and vessels that you see. And there's a really cool pullout of that new Star Destroyer. Um, you get to learn all about the parts of that. Yes! Yes! 
Yeah. Oh, you're going to use the phone here? Okay. Um, what else we have here? We got the uh, original trilogy graphic novel. This comes out March 1st from uh, Disney Lucasfilm Press. Um, it is uh, adapted, the original trilogy, by uh, Alessandro Ferrari did the adaptation with a, a bunch of different artists, uh, Matteo Pignala, Igor Chimiso, Alessandro Pastorvicchio, Matteo Piana, uh, Davidi Turotti. Um, it was done by Disney Publishing Worldwide, and it basically has, you know, it's a straightforward graphic novel adaptation of the original trilogy. Um, it is a bit abridged. Uh, this was designed for ages 9 to 12, so it is a bit abridged. Some of the key scenes that uh, got cut out, like the uh, scene with Ponda Baba and Dr. Evazan in the cantina, that's just completely gone. Um, you know, the, the uh, feeding Ula to the Rancor and the big dance number in Jabba's Palace, that's gone. Um, you know, even the, the part of the scene that uh, establishes who Yoda is when, when Luke goes to visit him, the, the whole following him back and still not knowing it's Yoda, he, instead here he just lands he meets Yoda. So it's, while it tells the main point of the story, it misses a lot of the, the, the subtle scenes that may not have to do a whole lot with the, the larger plot. Like, you know, it cuts out, uh, it's not wise to upset a Wookiee, you know, playing the uh, hollow chess, the Dejaric chess aboard the Falcon. You know, it's just little things that, that add more to the universe, but uh, don't necessarily add to the plot. A lot of those uh, kind of got cut, uh, which is too bad. But, you know, if you want a basic way to explain how, what is Star Wars to someone, this is a good way to do it. Uh, it's got some pretty cool art. I, I like the kind of the cartoony style of the characters, and then the backgrounds are very painted. So it's like, you know, got kind of got two different styles there. Um, yeah, well, we won't go to that page. That's a spoiler for Empire Strikes Back. But, uh, you know, you got some, some neat spreads with, with uh, the characters, some very luscious backdrops. Um, you know, it's, it's designed for, for kids 9 to 12. It's a good retelling, and I believe it will go on sale and retail for uh, $20. So, you know, if you have a, a kid that's into graphic novels, maybe hasn't seen Star Wars, maybe has seen Star Wars and wants to relive some of their favorite moments, you know, this is a good way to do it. Um, it you know, I don't know, if, if you're a big collector and you want to um, have something that retells Star Wars the way you remember it, you know, watching it in the movies, this probably isn't for you. Uh, I don't know, one of my favorite scenes that gets cut out is uh, Luke, Leia, and Han, the scruffy nerf herder scene in the Echo Med Lab. Um, that kind of just gets cut out. Um, probably because, you know, you might have to explain that later on. <laughs> um, but uh, what else you got? Are you just splashing water everywhere? Yeah. Um, nom, 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 nom. Yeah. Yeah, he says, do you want some water? Glug, 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 glug. Oh yeah, you always want some water? Does Chewbacca want water? Yeah? Oh, you want Yowie back? Okay. Alright, Yowie. Uh, this is going to be dangerous for you. You're going to get wet. I'm pretty sure of it. Alright, keep watching. I'll keep talking while Baby Jawa puts Yowie in the water. Yowie says, no, please don't do that. Uh oh, some Cheerios fell off. Alright, um... What else we got? Uh, let's talk about the most recent episodes of Star Wars Rebels. Uh, we had Homecoming, which has Hera reconnecting with her estranged father, Sham Sandula, who is running uh, the Resistance on Ryloth. There's it's kind of got a cool little meet the parents vibe with it when um, Kanan has, is, is very nervous about meeting uh, Sham, maybe because he's space married to Hera, maybe because this guy is a legend that uh, worked with Mace Windu, who is basically like his grand mentor, that, you know, uh, Kanan's master was Depa Balaba, Depa was, uh, her master was Mace Windu, so hearing about this man who fought alongside Mace during the Clone Wars, probably, uh, you know, a lot of hero worship going on there. Are you putting Cheerios in the cup? Yeah, that's kind of gross. I mean, I don't know. Uh, and then we get to see a bunch of the other... Freedom Fighters, actually, no, just two of them. Uh, Numa, who's grown up, that was a really cool thing to have her return as an adult. Um, and, and even on her uh, armor that she's wearing, it has Boyle's name, that one of the clones that uh, rescued her back in the Clone Wars. And then Gobi Glee is back as well. He is the uh, bard from uh, the Clone Wars that sang the ballad of uh, Champs and Dula. 
and now he's one of the top fighters. So I don't know what they, if that means they've run out of fighters that now that they have to promote the bard all the way up to uh, second or third in command. Um, and, and you see some tension here that, uh, you know, do we capture this uh, escort carrier that, you know, carrying the TIE bombers, or do we blow it up as a symbol that, that Ryloth uh, will not stand for the Empire's presence? Um, and in the end, it's the question of what's the bigger fight, and uh, Hera wins over uh, Numa and, and Gobi, forces her dad to kind of back down and realize that, uh, you know, there is a bigger fight here, we, we need this, this carrier for our own rebellion. Um, it was a good episode, and I, it was great to see some uh, familiar faces from the Clone Wars, as well as get to see some TIE bombers in action. Uh, I hope to see these, these characters again. I, I think it would be interesting watching the Ryloth resistance get wrapped up into the fold, how it connects with the, the Rebel Alliance. All right, on to the honorable ones. This was uh, Agent Callus and Zeb getting uh, stuck on an ice planet, or the, the ice moon of Barin uh, on Geonosis. Uh, it starts off, they, they go to Geonosis, they're, they're looking for something. They end up uh, realizing, oh, Geonosis is completely dead. Ezra senses that in the forest, but yet he doesn't seem to sense the stormtroopers that are aboard the uh, construction sphere. Agent Callus is trapped there. So I don't know, I, I think maybe he was sensing the, the, the death that was permeating Geonosis, and that was just really, really strong in the force. Uh, yep, all right. Um, then we have the uh, Bonzami, the uh, Zamboni named giant monsters of, uh, in the, the, the caverns on um, Barin. They were pretty cool. I kind of liked their giant uh, kind of parrot beak style uh, Mouths. Uh, it begs the question on a lot of these planets that have giant monsters living in caves. You know, we've got the uh, Bonzami here. We've got the Gundarks on uh, Vancor. We have you know the Wampas on Hoth. What do they eat? They're, they're, like, there's nothing to eat. You know, if you're a big apex uh, predator, what are you eating? So obviously, you're just eating random you know space explorers that get thrown your way. But uh, then back to Callus and Zeb, that they, you know, work together, that, you know, Zeb has all the chances in the world to, to take Callus out, that this is a, an enemy, both of their rebel group, but also a personal enemy, as this man has uh, engaged in the destruction of Lasat people um, on Lasan. Um, and, and, but we get more backstory on Agent Callus and how he feels and, and what you know, he's been involved in and why he doesn't like Lasat very much that, uh, you know, his, his men were killed by a Lasat uh, mercenary um, earlier in the wars, I, I think, on uh, Onderon. Um, so it's interesting to see them and then, you know, of course, them working together, fighting side by side against the, the Bonzami just to stay alive and then finding a way out together. Um, Zeb just shows off how badass and how strong he is that he can uh, throw Callus up, lodge him into the ceiling of this ice cave with the spike that's uh, part of uh, the weapon. That's pretty strong and then is able to then fling him just with his hind legs all the way up out of the pit. It's like why couldn't they have just flung the homing beacon out of the pit because you know, once they get up on top it's, it's freezing cold. And then of course we see the two different types of uh, welcomings that they get as they get rescued. Uh, you know, Zeb gets picked up by his family, essentially, and they're all glad to see him on the ghost. Meanwhile, you know, eventually Callus gets picked up um, in, in one of the, uh, I think the, in, in the trivia gallery on, on StarWars.com, they mentioned that, uh, yeah, it was a, a passing freighter or something that got uh, Callus's distress signal because uh, the Empire had expended sufficient resources to, for one man and decided to call it off very uh, THX-1138 that's like, oh, hey, we're, we're, we're out of resources for chasing you, we're just going to shut this chase down. Um, so, you know, Callus is just like, this is very different. Um, but again, you know, should he keep that uh, Bahrain meteorite thing um, that glows and gives off heat? That's probably not a healthy thing to, to you know, keep long term, especially right above your bed. I hope Callus is, doesn't want to have any kids. Um, but we'll see what goes on with that. Uh, both great episodes. Uh, yeah, this show just keeps getting better and better. It's, it, it is really cool to see, have these kind of episodes that explore just one character. Um, we've kind of had a bunch of those all in the past. That We, you know, we had Zeb this episode. We, we had Hera and her uh, family the previous episode. Um, Ezra was the, kind of the focus of the call. Um, Legends of the Lasat, you know, Zeb again. 
Yeah. So that that's it uh, for this week. Um, yeah, we, we got this stuff. We got Chewbacca here. This is from Underground Toys. It makes the same call each time, which is kind of sad, but uh, yeah, it's it's got his little pouch here. Yeah, you want your Chewie? All right, with that, yeah, wait, anything else you want to add? I like this new Chewbacca, but my tail's wet. I blame Baby Jawa. Oh, don't blame Baby Jawa. Yeah, and none of that. Look, our poster behind us stayed up the entire episode. So see you guys next time in two weeks. All right. May the Force be with you!